On the prior video from yesterday, we prepared many bounce targets for today's pullback, of which I would like to follow up on now and what to expect next. With that said, welcome back to Elio Trade's channel. I'm your host, Crown again today, and a little bit of follow up TA as I want to reiterate the purpose of these videos. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, but I'd like to follow up on the sort of analysis from yesterday as we are getting those first initial major bounces. And I want to talk about, you know, what to expect next and how these sort of things typically work out in my experience. With that in mind, I always want to reiterate that, hey, when we're talking about trading, when we're talking about technical analysis, we are always, always, always not talk talking in absolutes that cannot be done. There is no I called it. There is no I'm the winner or anything like that. It is only statistics, if I can say that properly, and probabilities. And that is essentially what we're doing here. We're looking for those high probability plays that can produce tradable bounces, theoretically tradable bounces, that is. And sometimes they might even turn into reversals. So today we'll follow up on that. But first things first, I wanted to bring you towards the chart of the day, something a little bit interesting over here out of left field. And this is the next rendition of my own app, which, which by the way, is 100% free. You can find it for yourself at app.crowntrading.net. And I wanted to show off the open interest chart right here, which represents the amount of contracts open for leveraged positions. And what happened in the last, um, I guess going back to the 27th of December, where Bitcoin hit the $52,000 range highs, which we said was likely to pull back from, you can see that open interest was actually uh, coming up into that region, meaning that people were putting on more and more leveraged positions, likely leveraged long positions. And as you can see over here, ever since $52,000 was rejected, those positions have been steadily coming off. And now we have seen almost, um, yeah, almost about a billion and a half coming out from the top at that $52,000 region now down to our 46,500 low and you can see that uh, many positions coming off with that does suggest that, does suggest that the market is somewhat resetting but in the grand scheme of things, if we go here to the daily, you'll notice that this can still come down significantly lower. So I would like to once again, set the tone for today's analysis in the sense of we're not talking about, you know, macro reversals here. We are simply talking about potential bounce areas and what the sort of next uh, next move on that looks like. So let's go on to Bitcoin over here. I wanna follow up on yesterday's analysis. We did hit our blue box targeted region on the more conservative uh, area for, for, for a little bit of a bouncy bounce. And now comes the fun game of, well, <laughs> where do we find the high of this next rally? Of course, if I go over here, or actually if I just, we could just work off this chart right here. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of this because it's not uh, relevant towards the analysis, nor is this. Get out of there, <laughs> stop that. And basically Bitcoin on the daily is within a range. That range being $46,000 low versus $52,000 high. What happens when you hit the top side of the range, as we spoke about just a few days ago, likely to pull back, just like when you get to the bottom side of the range, likely to bounce up. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So again, I want to be very deliberately clear that I'm not saying that anyone who perhaps might have uh, taken a theoretical position in this region right here is, you know, bound to go just straight to the moon exactly from this point. We never see any ebbs and flows from now. No, of course not. Of, co of course, this is a highly volatile asset. And, you know, few percentage moves either which way are highly likely. But where is the next sort of area to be aware of? for a bit of a, well, in this case, um, you know, I guess an easy way to be perhaps even taking profit on some of those bounce plays. Well, the first and obvious one is yesterday's breakdown region, which was where? Which was just around the low $48,000-ish region. Now, keep in mind, if you are looking for the greater reversal play, what would essentially confirm that? Well, it's certainly not going to be today. What this would likely look like, if I get up my little brush over here is you see Bitcoin close somewhere around this white 200 simple moving average, which is 47,000 and uh, 47,800, let's say. And then t and then over the next 48 hours, essentially before the Friday closure, we'd really want to see Bitcoin close back above this area right here, that $49,000 region or so. Why is that? Because that is your former breakdown region from your top side rejection on this essential uh, channel. Anyways, 
That's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves right now. So again, understand what you're likely doing. Understand that being more aggressive with, or maybe not aggressive is the right word, but greedy with taking profits can obviously lead towards, well, you know, losing out on those profits altogether, which is why personally, if I was taking this theoretical position over here, I'd be very quick to be letting go at least some on this first move up, of which we've already had a more than thousand dollar move up from that, uh, from that point. You know, there's no harm in realizing at least least some so that even if you do come back down, well, you're still probably in the green and you can have a stop loss at break even on the wick low essentially. And and what the next move very likely looks like if we do close today above, let's say 47,800 on the daily, then I would be looking for tomorrow to very likely try up somewhere into the mid to upper 40, uh, 48s. And then we come back to it after that and see if that position is potentially still worth holding. And that's how you can kind of manage these things going onwards and forwards from here. And again, obvious uh, risk management on something like this, it's just going to be that last wick low right here. When you see something like that, it is actually rather uh, rather important to kind of mark off. All right, let's move on to Ethereum. So Ethereum yesterday, we marked off this area as a potential bouncy region. We actually wicked a little bit below there. That's okay. We we do operate off of closures in this case. They come all the way down to the bottom end of it, more importantly at 37.30. Okay, now looking for that bounce probably somewhere around the median of this range and the mid 3800 ish region currently trading at uh, 3788. Again, what essentially invalidates this and implies that this thing is going to not just move to the downside, but uh, move significantly to the downside. that will be with any sort of an hourly closure below your current wick low at uh, or is it exactly just below 3,700 and implying moves back down, you know, at minimum to 36 and probably even lower than that over time, to be honest with you. It would look not good, we'll say. Okay, uh, and until then, you know, similar to Bitcoin, this one, however, not as strong and similar to Bitcoin at $52,000, I cannot be excited for any sort of a macro reversal here on Ethereum as long as you are below 4130, our same area that we've had marked off here for weeks on end now, still yet to be overtaken. Short term, however, bounces up to mid 38s is completely fine. And then again, same sort of thing as Bitcoin goes. Uh, I don't see any reason to be uh, super greedy with, t with taking profits. Instead, take at least a little bit early and often. It'll make you feel better. It'll realize some in your pocket. And if your risk management does get hit, assuming that you do have one in a relevant place, in this case, you already know where I'm thinking, then, well, at least you ended up on the green in, in the green on the trade or at least <laughs> at least break even okay moving on to symbol um link let's go to link over here link came down to our 19 i had this 1990 ish area marked off right here we came all the way down to 1960 on that wick low again close enough is close enough in this case that does offer up a bit of an edge at that 1960 ish region meaning that any sort of an hourly closure below there and i do look for this one to shatter the bed all the way back down to your prior range lows in the low $18 region. Until then, short term, very likely does try for some upside from here. Anywhere around 21 to 21 and a half is fair game. However, things don't really turn around uh, long term and the same case as before, as long as we're below about 2336. So again, I don't think that this is the time to be greedy. Yes, things can definitely reverse from here, but when it's times like this, I found it's always better to be conservative and be a little bit more aggressive with taking profits. Uh, Cardano, the Cardurpio, my favorite one over here, the best one to be saying. And this one actually hit perfectly into our 133-ish region, the top side of that blue box. It's going to get all the way down there, to be fair. And same thing on this one as the other ones. Long term, can't get too excited about it as long as we're below one, uh, 158 or so. Short term, Risk management below our current wick low is completely fine, and targets back up towards you know the mid uh, mid 140s are compl is completely fine uh, for the short term. But these are just balance plays. We are not talking about reversals again until it comes back above this prior local high, that rejective local high. And hey, if you do lose the 133 low. Well, back down, back down to the crypto hell, I guess, uh, in the 120 to one and a quarter region. Uh, moving on to Terra Luna. This one, very interesting as well. Very strong here. Very, very strong here, actually. So it did come down to our $84 region. Um, you can you can understand this one is relatively strong uh, simply because of the fact that it didn't correct as much as a lot of the other names that we've looked at today. Now, I do still think that this one could very easily come back down to, you know, the mid or even low $70 region. It's still, however, one of the best long term. So with that in mind, what would I essentially be using as a risk management in this case? What would be relevant? I suppose you could use this current wick low on the full hour. 
uh, at about 82 and a half bucks. You do see some good volume on the right there. So technically speaking, it should be a decent pivot uh, theoretically. Although, you know, forgive me for, uh, for <laughs> I mean, this is, this is just a really, really strong chart right here, uh, which means that I should be, you know, more leaning on it. But uh, I do think that this one does take a little bit of time reaccumulating at the highs here before trying again. However, short term, does it try and move back up towards uh, the low 90s? Perhaps yes. The thing is, is, is that the thing is, is <laughs> that's a terrible alliteration right there. The thing is, is that I, I would still be on guard that this one could very easily come down to the mid 70s, uh, and that would really wouldn't do too much. I mean, hell, this thing could come down all the way to like 69 dollars and still be completely good on a higher low schedule right here. So, I'd be cognizant of the 84ish region. Yes, we are getting a bounce from there right now. Do I feel super confident about it? No, I do not. Uh, namely because of the many drives of bearish divergence that are forming here on your medium and lower time frames uh, as well. So I would be a little more cautious on it, especially as long as you're below the mid 95 region. Okay, cool. Um, did I miss one over here? Oh yeah, we had symbol DOT to look at as well. Uh, this one hit perfectly actually into the top side of our blue box here as well. Again, getting the first bounce off that. So the first bounce target should have been the 200 simple. We actually might have already hit that at $29. Yeah, almost right there as well. So 28.55. Again, same sort of logic here applies as the other ones. If you do come back down and take out that last uh, $27 wick to the downside low, I am looking for this one to really shatter the bed back down somewhere around uh, 24 and a half to 25. Until then, you know, bounces on right here. Kind of already played out the easy portion of that. I suppose next next uh, move would be around 29 to 29 and a half. Same thing as all the other ones though, as long as we are below the range highs, which in this case is 31 and a half, I can't really be you know, looking for any sort of macro reversal in this case, just looking for, of course, tradable bounces of which now you've kind of seen these happen in the last, uh, in the last 24 hours. Um, I hope this, that this was in some way valuable. I forgot to let you know that I have my own channel, by the way, as well, where we do Bitcoin analysis each and every day. If you think that that might be uh, useful in your life, well, you can uh, find a link in the description below. And uh, again, let me know what you think of these videos. Um, any sort of a constructive criticism is cool, is good to go. Um, and uh, other than that, you might even consider liking the video if you find it in some way, well, useful, hopefully. <laughs> All right, with that said, take care. I'll see you in the next one.